look again and again and again at even the most common things that are around you all the time, you'll discover that there is an infinite amount of wonder and beauty in the commonplace things that we walk past every day. In the salt water, on the flats, long-legged birds with long beaks are probing the mud to get their meals. Oh, we've got this wonderful group of terns sitting out here, fish-eating birds with these outrageous, outrageous beaks. So this group of terns were flanked by a marbled godwit and a willet on the other side. They can be feeding in exactly the same part of the mudflat, but because of their bill adaptations, they're exploiting food resources that are at different levels, so they're not competing with each other. John Muir Laws, who is known to many as Jack, spends much of his time sharing skills and knowledge with others. The secret behind all of this is water control. We teach classes on natural history and on different ways of drawing and sketching, and I took all my ideas from teaching those workshops and put them into a series of books both about natural history and how to draw. Just poking along the edges of our bay, you get a chance to have a glimpse into one of the richest bird environments worldwide. Sometimes the most interesting bird behavior can be found right in the midst of our own human habitats. Different sorts of birds are hanging out in the shallows versus the deep water marina. In that deep marina, cormorants and kingfishers dive for fish. Part of the fun of drawing something from life in the field is that, well, it's alive. So the bird is going to be constantly moving. They keep displacing each other from the tops of these masts. And now there's one, and now there's none. I'm just letting myself flow from one set of observations to the next. A little flotilla of cormorants, taking advantage of whatever nature gives me. It's a little green heron. Oh, that's a neat, neat pose too. I will also often add written notes, as many details are easier to show with words than they are with pictures. I have a small set of watercolors and a water brush, which contains the water in the handle of the brush. That makes it much easier to use in the field. The journal is not about the picture. It's about paying deeper attention. When I go exploring in nature, I'm scanning my environment for two things. That's beauty and wonder. I'm constantly on the lookout for things that, as a naturalist, as a scientist, makes me go, hmm. And these often are just very subtle things. It's taking its foot and stirring it around in the water to scare up any little critters. They try to get away from the foot and end up in the beak. Making connections to nature through journaling is one way Jack hopes to foster stewardship practices. One way of looking at my work is that it's an effort to help people fall in love with the world around them. To help make sure that together we are protecting these animals. And so too with drawing anything in nature through the process of attention, the attention that's required to draw and to journal about what we encounter, our relationship with nature widens and deepens. In the freshwater marsh, ducks and geese are paddling around. The edges of it, there's large numbers of perching birds. I see red-winged blackbirds and brown-headed cowbirds. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Whether you are an experienced birder or just getting started, Places like this, where you have all these adjacent habitats, are wonderful places to go and explore. And in the beauty department, I'm looking for the way the light glances off the surface of the water, or the way that a bird's feathers 
furl and unfurl as it stretches and preens its feathers. These little micro beauties are around us all the time. And if you open your heart to those, you'll find you're walking through a universe filled with things that make you gasp with joy. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jack. Thank you, Jack. Hey there, everybody. It's really, really good to be with you. I'm, I'm really honored to be in among this community of stewards. And I've got my, my deepest gratitude and respect for the work that you're doing on behalf of nature and wild places. Um, and, um, and by so doing, kind of take care of our, our, our larger community. Thank you so much. Today, what I want to do is just to, I've got it's like 45 minutes. And in that time, I want to um, take us on a little virtual adventure near Bridgeport and um, show you how I might go about kind of looking at a landscape, taking parts of what I see and putting that down into a journal. I want to encourage all of you to start keeping your own journal, your own notebook of your observations. And some of you right now are thinking like, uh, yeah, not so much because I'm not an artist. Okay, um, so if you haven't been drawing in a long time, then it's when you first pick up your pencil, it's funky. It's weird to start drawing again. But here's the deal. Drawing is a skill that you will develop very, very quickly if you start just doing this on a regular basis. And if you start just keeping a kind of naturalist journal of the things you see, the things that you notice, and you use words, you use your pictures, you're counting things, just taking those notes, putting them down on paper, you're gonna find that very quickly, these are skills that become yours. And there's, there's no magic, there's no gift to it. It's just doing it on a regular basis. You can absolutely build these skills. And there isn't a, uh, a, a right way or a wrong way to do it. The more that you, um, that, that you're working with it though, you'll just kind of do, you'll develop your own system. You look at journals from 10 different people, they'll look 10 different ways and yours will look different as well. And it will reflect the parts of the landscape that you really connect with, the things that you're most excited about. And so as I mentioned in that video, what I do is I kind of go wandering around in the woods and I'm looking for things that make me go like, what's up with that? All right. So these little kind of subtle, there's so much stuff out there that even after spending most of my life, as a naturalist, I, I really don't understand. So I will find, I'm just looking for the little mysteries and I'll start to follow those. And also the things that just make your heart feel glad, the things that are, 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 are beautiful and the joyful moments. If we, in our journal, we find these things, we describe them, your memory of that experience becomes better, much, much better. And that will be a moment that you carry with you for the rest of your life. Otherwise, what happens is even these sublime, beautiful moments, um, our, our, our brains aren't set up to really encode that stuff and have it stick with you. So you just think of those, those times, remember when you're out there in the field and you're looking back at the mountains, you're just like, oh, this is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen, right? Remember that night, All right? It wasn't the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. It's just the most beautiful one that you can remember, right? So, um, that, like, I've got a terrible memory for jokes, so you can tell me the same joke again and again and again, and it keeps me good, right? So, um, it, with, with, with nature, your brain isn't automatically going to remember this night with the beautiful sunset. But if you journal about it, it's yours forever. Because that little bit of extra of attention is going to take this experience and it's going to lock it into your brain. Maybe you've traveled somewhere and just made a little sketch somewhere along the way. That little moment where you just popped out a little journal, made a little drawing, that you can still remember that place and that experience vividly. Doesn't have to be a pretty picture. But the more that you work at it, the more you start doing this on a regular basis, those pictures that start off just kind of crude representations and reminders and placeholders for what you're seeing, in about a year, you're going like, wow, this really looks like that. That really looks like this. This is cool. And then you're getting positive reinforcement from that. The whole thing kind of starts pulling yourself, you're, you along by it. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
So I want to encourage all of you who live on the east side or have access to it, let's start journaling about it. Um, I have uh, backyard envy of you. I am currently sitting in the middle of San Mateo um, in deep smoky air um, on quarantine lockdown, looking at a rather dead backyard. And um, there's no Eastern Sierra here. You have the Eastern Sierra, right? And so oh, it's just, it is just every moment out there is so beautiful. The journal will help you embrace that even more. So now let's head over to Bridgeport, shall we? All right, and um, I'm gonna show you how I just put together a bunch of different things that catch my eye and make me happy. Um, and here we go. And play, all right, so um if you are um uh on your your zoom platform here if you uh um sp set it up for a kind of a split screen you can see you can take that little box that has me in it and you can enlarge that um, um or make it smaller there's there's a little seam that will make this screen with the picture on it bigger or smaller and the screen that has me on it bigger or smaller. Actually, I'm gonna stop this share for just a minute because I do want to make one other adjustment before we go over to this slideshow. I am going to share, share with you my journal here and I'm gonna pretend I'm there because you got a dream. Um, and here we go. And now we're going to go to share this. All right. So here we go. Here's my piece of paper. And there you are. Ooh, you're thinking, well, this is this is pretty cool. Um, so here's here's the kind of um, the, a lot of times when people see a view like this and they say, I'd love to be able to sketch this. I'd love to be able to do something with this. Um, the problem is that there is so much big out there, it gets overwhelming. And so what people will do is they'll take their journal, they'll turn it sideways and just start drawing mountains and they'll draw from one side of their paper to the other. It takes a long time. And partway through it, the friends that you're with, they, they say, look, hey, we gotta go. And by that point, you're also sick of drawing trees and you, kinda, you didn't really have that great an experience doing it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of shortcuts that I use that help me be able to take an experience like being out in the fields near Bridgeport and get that down on paper. All right, um, I usually start with just something, something small um, or getting some mark on my page. And so one way of doing that is just to write where you are. Um, so I'm gonna write Bridgeport Valley And it is August 28th, I think. I'll often put in the weather. I don't know what your weather is right now. Somebody chime in, what weather are you having? Anybody who can make a comment? Sunshine. Sunshine, I like hearing that. All right, so I'm just gonna put in a little sun here. And so it's just a little icon, kind of a playful little you know, what's the weather today icon. And what this does is it breaks in my piece of paper. It's now gone from being this tabla rasa to look, we're in a place, we're in a place at a time. And this is, uh, it also kind of date stamps and geo references your notes. So if you see something special on this day, later on you'll know like, oh, when and where. And so it date stamps, geo references every page. So that's a great way to start. It also once you once you get something on the page, it's a lot easier for other things to follow it. Now what I will often do is just to give myself a little anchor drawing, something unintimidating. Oh, look at the lady, ladybug over there. See the ladybug? See the ladybug crawling up that iris? All right. Let's 
let's just just uh, do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just you find some little anchor drawing, and I'm just going to draw a tiny little ladybug on my page. I'm going to do it about life size. Maybe I'll zoom you in a little bit more. Whoop. And um, there he or she is. Turns out you cannot tell their, uh, whether they're male or female by looking at the patterns on the little ladybug. Um, I'm going to give it a little shadow right next to it. And um, maybe a little bit of redness. All right, now since you've got your first ladybug, you know it's a good luck day. So you're gonna have some fun exploring around out there. Just putting a little shadow on it kind of makes it feel like it's you know, eh, 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 crawling its way across. You now got something on your page, the whole page feels much less intimidating. So just early at the start of a journaling session, just put something down on the page. Doesn't have to be big, but it's a little anchor. And if you do that, then what you're gonna to want to follow that with other things as well. So there it is, just wandering around on my paper. And now I start to look around the valley. I say, wow, there's beautiful irises in bloom today. Might want to go check those out. There's that wonderful landscape um, across the back. And so um, what am I gonna do? Well, just you walk around and find out just what, what you wanna put in your journal is anything that speaks to you. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the big landscape, well, maybe save that for later. If you feel called by an iris, then go to the iris. Go to wherever nature is calling you, and you don't have to make a pretty picture of it. So let's go over by that iris there, all right? Sit down, make yourself comfortable, and you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, how do you even start with something like this? There's this super complicated thing. Here's the detail, the deal. All this detail, ignore the detail. Ignore the detail. A little bit of that will come in later. Let's just look at the structure of this thing. So there's on an iris, there are three types of petal like things. There are these things that kind of come up with the streaks on them and they flop down. And you see there's one there, one there, there's one in the back. One, two, three. And then above those are these little things with bunny ears. See these two little bunny ears sticking up. This lower thing is actually the sepal. This is the petaloid pistil. It's the female part of the flower, and it looks like a petal on these, these, these flowers. So it's got two little bunny ears and a tube that comes to the same place that that sepal came out. And then in between those are these are three tall petals. So this is actually the petal. And then in the background here, you can see some that are, uh, haven't opened yet. So I will often spend some time just geeking out and looking at the structure of these things and going like, oh, whoa, check that out. Huh, oh, that's neat. Now I wanna try to get this down on my paper somehow. So what I do when I draw is I will start my drawing usually with this pencil. This is called a non-photo blue pencil. And it's an extremely light pale pencil and it will allow me to block in the basic shape of this iris. Um, and it's so light that I can draw in all of my basic lines and then go over that with another pencil that will make a darker line. And people will completely ignore that all of those ghost lines putting in my basic shape are already there. So I start with something light and then I'm gonna move on to those dark lines. But something I've found when I'm doing Zoom presentations is when this is live, you can see me drawing with this. But when I draw with this, it kind of looks like this. And everybody who's watching it says, this is not very helpful. So I'm gonna show you what kind of lines I would do with this pencil, but using a different pencil. Um, but if you're doing this at home, I suggest that you get yourself one of these Prismacolor Cola Race non-photo blue pencils 
Um, if you go to my website, you can, you can find, I, I give you kind of a, a link to find these. You can also get these on my store, but this is a great way to start. It allows you to break down the process of drawing something. Otherwise, you know, like, oh, like how do you, how do you go about handling an iris? But it allows you to kind of do it in a few smaller steps. So this is how I might go about doing that iris. Is first I would put in a little mark saying, all right, the, I want my flower roughly here. And there's going to be a bud sticking up next to it. And the center of the flower is going to be coming down here. Right? I need somebody who's watching on the screen to let me know if these marks are too light. Can you see what I'm doing or do I need to be a little bit more forceful with these marks? Too light. Somebody, what? Too light. Too light. Okay, great. So I'm going to draw these um, with a little bit more vigor. Here's the central axis of this. Here is where my flower is going to be. Those would be a bud that will be sticking up here. Can that be seen? Oh, I can see it on my little screen here. I've got a little inset. All right. So what I then I'm going to do is say, all right, the top, the bottom part, I'm going to cut my flower in half. All right. The bottom part here, I'm going to have these sepals that come up. I've got two sepals. So see, this is just a kind of a scribbly drawing. And above that is going to be those petaloid pistols. I like saying that. And then I'm going to have a, a petal sticking up here, another petal arcing around here. Um, another petal is coming up and kind of coming around in the background here. And then there's a cool bud sticking up. So what I've done is I've blocked in the basic parts of my flower. And it, when it's just in a scratchy stage like this, right, I will be able to see like, oh, maybe I need to make this a little bit longer, right? And, and maybe make it droop in a little bit more. So I just changed the angle and position of one of these, right? This one over here, yeah, I like where that one is, but maybe make it a little bit longer. So I can make a few little changes and I'm good to go. Now, I can start to draw more slowly and carefully and deliberately on top of all of these quick ghost lines. And what I usually do is just start with whatever parts of the flower are on the side closest to me and draw them. And generally, I'm going to work kind of from the, but working from the bottom up. So I have on these, there is a sepal that is coming up and it kind of curls into itself. And then there's the other side of it and it curls around as well. And here's the part of this flower that attaches down here. Now I've been drawing for a while here, so I have more practice under my belt in getting these, sort of figuring out how to visualize these things and kind of get them to, to, to work for me. But you're gonna find that if you just start making your journal and you start drawing on a regular basis, these skills, are going to come. All right, then there's the pedaloid pistol that comes up above the sepal and it has a sort of arching body to it and at the end it has these two little structures that flip up and the, the it's cool the bumblebees and things will crawl between the sepal and this petaloid pistol and they'll kind of go nah, 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 down here um so i've got another one of those growing over here with this little attractor I usually do most of my drawing with a pencil. Um, today I'm using a pen just so it shows up better on your screen. 
And in the center of this, there is this wonderful petal. And I put in a few little of the little irregularities and bumps on it. It has another friend who is hiding back here on the side. And there is another petal that comes up and I see part of it sticking out here. There are bracts that are wrapping around the end of this. And there's my first iris. Um, I then I'm going to draw in this big bud that is sticking up here. It comes to a little bit of a cone top. And I made it a little bit too high, but I just have to be okay with that. Now, what we found is that when you're journaling, if you just have a drawing like this, then you start to feel a lot of pressure that this has to be a good drawing. Um, a better way of handling that though, is that if you um, start to add written notes all over this, it, is, it makes it so much easier to show what is interesting to you. So for instance, if I say um, this part here is covered with with thin blue lines. And oh, look, there's a bumblebee going to that one over there. And I'm gonna sort of write visited by a bumblebee. All right, so I'm finding out who the pollinators are these. So anything that I can take note of, I'm gonna get that down either with a sketch or, um, or by um, adding written notes. Adding these written notes ends up being really important. It takes so much pressure off of you. Um, let's see, I'm gonna have a line going to this one that says unopened. Unopened bud. Um, and then you start thinking, so my, 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 my strategy here is I usually start with just observations and putting down all the things that I notice. And then I will start to intentionally ask questions about what is going on here. And so I'll say to myself like, huh, um, how, long is, um, how long is the bloom season for these? Um, so I'm going to write that question in here, draw a little question mark, and I'm going to write how long will the iris be in bloom at this elevation. Right. So I can get my questions, I have my observations, and <clears throat> I'm going to write, oh, there are thousands of M and a little heart because I love irises. All right, so you, you can let yourself into the page. So I'll start with a sketch, I'll then annotate it. Um, if you want to, you can add color with it. A great way of doing that is just to bring a small set of colored pencils with you when you go romping around. Um, but but that's, that's a, a really good strategy for starting yourself in nature journaling. So the flower is not going to go anywhere. Um, and if I'm using words and pictures together, it's going to really help me um, 
be able to describe what I see. All right, this petal is solid blue at the tip. Blue at tip, lines below. Now you eat your lunch. You're out there munching away on your lunch and you're looking up at this landscape. Let's go back there just because we can. Um, oh, there we go. You're there looking at that landscape and you're thinking, you know what? I, I think I do want to make a landscape drawing here, but if you feel a little bit intimidated about like, how would you like, it's just so vast, it's so big. So I wanna teach you the best trick for drawing landscapes. You draw a big landscape, it's gonna be hard. But if you make a mini landscape, what we call the landscapito, landscapitos, you can finish them much more quickly. And if you don't like it, it's okay. If you do like it, it's okay. But instead of drawing a great big landscape, I'm gonna do a little landscape drawing and just in a box this big. That huge landscape, I'm going to reduce it down to a little landscapito box, right? And what I like to do is at the start is just lightly with my pencil block in the major features. So there's that line across where I see all those distant trees, sort of my horizon. There is a glacial moraine coming up to the side, there is part of a valley wall that comes up and uh, I am gonna have another hill over here. So I'm just putting in general kind of placeholders for all of these, these, these little parts. Right, and what I want to try to what I want to try to avoid is having the here's a kind of composition trick. If you look at the little composition that I have so far, we'll zoom on that just a little bit. Whoop. All right, notice a composition mistake that I've made. If you're kind of like halfway through, this thing is right here. This drawing is about half sky, half ground. That composition is usually going to be much less interesting for people. Um, and I'm going to like my drawing a lot better if I just raise the roof a little bit. Look at this. I'm going to make my sky up here so that there's actually more, more sky than there is ground. I could have it more ground than there is sky. And even though I've made my drawing bigger because that's where the sky is, I haven't made um, I'm not going to have to do more work up here, but it's going to be aesthetically more pleasing having more sky than ground here. Right. Now I'm going to start to draw what I see. And so I just want to keep it really, really simple. And if you think like, how are you going to draw all those trees? Just watch how I'm going to, the, the trick here is just sort of simplifying the landscape. So out there, I'm going to just sort of have like, here's my horizon line, my distant horizon line. And instead of a solid line, I've kind of broken that up a little bit. There's a few little places out there where there are some trees. So I'm just putting a few little bumps on that. Just tiny little dots. Those are those trees. All right. Now, there is a moraine that comes down here. And I draw that with a slightly heavy, heavier line. I'm gonna suggest that there are some valleys that come off it with some lines that um, tilt in this direction. Then behind that is this other ridge. And then way back further down the canyon, there is this ridge here. Now, what I'm going to try to do with this back one here is make my line a little bit thinner. Now, 
And the reason I do that is that a thinner line just sort of appears like it's more in the background. Lastly, there is this ridge here. And you're saying you don't have to count peaks. You just want to get something that roughly is going to say it comes along here and it's pretty jaggedy. And that's good. In the foreground, I'm going to put in a little bit of detail. So in the foreground, I'm going to have at just the side where it's close to me, I'm going to say that there's some there's some irises sticking up down here. And look, there are some irises. Oh, there's some more irises. Iris, 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 iris. Iris, iris. There's a little landscape. And big secret for landscapes, just like um, with the um, iris there, is it all becomes more interesting if I have some written notes with it. So <clears throat> right here, I have this big moraine. I'm going to write moraine. Um, I'm going to write uh, uh, large snow fields. And lush green. All right. So just by adding a few little notes that kind of say something about the season and the place, that just comes alive. I can put in a little hint of some clouds back here and some clouds kind of above us. And so there's a little uh, essentially a zoom in and zoom out of where I am. Um, if you have a set of colored pencils, you can drop a little bit of colored pencil into these drawings. If you like doing stuff with watercolor, um, then you can do add a little bit of watercolor to it. With watercolor, there's a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, so I don't recommend to people that they start with watercolor. But what you'll find is that when you have been playing with um, watercolor for a little while, it starts just to behave um, a little bit more predictably and you can have a lot of fun with it. And you can get, you can do a lot of things really fast. I'm just dropping in a little bit of watercolor on some of these peaks here. And finally, a little bit into the background. There. So it you can get a lot of kind of the sense of the day, just a few quick strokes. Doesn't have to be a pretty picture, but that's plenty to then just sort of help you remember that place, that time, that afternoon. The afternoon where that, um, 
Mountain Bluebird came up and perched right next to you. Really do recommend that people add written notes with your drawings and pictures. Speaking of mountain bluebirds, um, if you look over there on the fence post, um, I think there is a, a mountain bluebird that, yep, get your binoculars on it. So there's a mountain bluebird over there. And so let's, let's just sort of take a look at kind of how we might go about sketching that. Um, and we're gonna just add it, collage it into this same page. So um, here we go. Um, when I'm drawing a bird like this, what I will often do is try to just initially, I look at the line right along its back. If you look at the screen, do you see my little pointer, right? You see that little slope at the back? All right, so there's the slope at the back. On this one, it's a lot steeper. So it's the slope of my back, and then there's the mass of the head and the mass of the body. That's how I start my drawings. I get in the slope of my back and the mass of the head and the body. And so let me show you how that might look here. So first it's sitting kind of pointing towards you and the back, slope of its back is a little bit like this at an angle like this. And I'm gonna block in, it has a head, it has a body, has a little beak sticking off. And it's up on a post, All right? So I get in a rough sketch of the general shape of that body, All right? And I want to make some notes about it. All right, the, the, back, the back of this thing is a, um, is, a, is a rich blue. There is a lighter, more brilliant blue on its throat. And then that turns into more of a white down on the lower belly. Uh, where I see the wings and the tail, those get bright blue too. So let's put this in. Kind of connecting the eye with the, the beak does a lot for kind of giving the birds its, its serious expression. Um, the bird has a, a belly, a fluffy belly. See more of the fluff around the bottom side. Can't see much. of the tail. I'm gonna put mine on a different kind of post because that's what we saw. But getting all these different elements together on your page, the flower, the bird, the, the ladybug, um, whatever it is, um, it, you, it just starts to tell a story of that day. And that's, <clears throat> I think that's one of the, the, the really wonderful things about um, nature journaling is you're, you're telling a story of where you were and the audience is actually yourself a month or a year from now. This is, this is a little letter to yourself to, to help you 
later on be able to recall more vividly this experience that you had? So some things are, are, are easier to show with, with words. Uh, some, so this, uh, um, it flies out and it is catching bugs out of the air. Catching bugs out of the air, All right? Anytime I, I, I make a, um, a, 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 a note, an observation that I think is really, really interesting, I can put a big exclamation point by those. Um, and that ha just helps you sort of be aware of when you're kind of getting a, 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 new, um, a new observation that you really want to memorize, re remember it. If you put a big exclamation point, or I've got a friend who does these kind of cool googly eyes, so they'll draw in these little googly eyes, looking over and kind of going like, whoa, check that out, right? Of, of whatever it is that you, you want to see, so I'll zoom in and show you my googly eyes. All right. Um, it just sort of helps you remember like, oh, wow, this was such a, a, a spectacular, spectacular thing. Um, if your bird moves while you're doing it, you know, you can then just start a new drawing, right? Now it's at this other pose and it's more, it's more slanty. Um, And at this one, I only am going to get this far in the drawing, and all of a sudden, at this point, my bird decides to fly off. <gasps> oh, all right. Um, then I can, I can just, you know, try to, anything that I have sort of still in my head. Um, that it kind of can have a different posture but I don't remember all the details down here. I don't, you don't have to have some perfect memory. You just want to kind of go with what, what do you remember? And then when your brain says, you know, I'm out, just, it's okay to stop. So a bunch of your drawings are, are, are going to be partly, are going to be partly, um, partly finished and that's okay. You don't need to finish anything in these journals but it's gonna be an incredible uh, reminder of where you were, what you were doing. Um, if you want, you can add titles in. Um, here is a little mountain I'm gonna draw in. put in a little mountain blue right there. I'll tell you, colored pencils are so much easier to control than a uh, than than watercolor. It is. I, I really recommend starting with colored pencils. They they do what you expect them to do. They cooperate with you. You don't need a jumbo set. A little set of some colored pencils will take you a long way. Um, so that is kind of a, a a quick look at you know what a. Um, let's see, where is my Zoom platform? Yeah, so this is a quick look at how uh, a nature journal page that you, you might be creating can look, All right? And what it has is all of these, these little moments. So you've got little landscape vignettes. You've got the wildlife that you're finding. You can have the track that you found in the mud. You can have the, the flowers that are blooming or their seed pods, and you collage all these things together on top of each other. 
and um, you end up with this wonderful record of what you saw. You might also, if you're a bird watcher, you can say that we saw a sage thrasher, sage thrasher, mountain bluebird. All right, um, you saw a sandhill crane. And uh, there were two of those. Um, there was one mountain bluebird, one sage thrasher. So, you know, you can also have the little scientist and you can use this to kind of keep track of your notes, what you're seeing in bloom, you know, if you saw all your experiences, it all goes down on your page. Essentially, this journal, this is your brain on paper. And what you're doing is you're, you're just documenting all of the, 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 the wonderful moments that nature gives you. It doesn't have to be a pretty picture, but you put them on side by side with each other and it just starts to, these, these then start to kind of connect to each other and it starts to tell the story of the place that you're in. And later on, when you look at this page, you'll be reminded so vividly of that day. And that I think is the, the, the magic of nature journaling. I just wanna remind you of a few key ideas here. Number one is what do I have on the page? I have words, I have pictures, and I have numbers. Words, pictures, and numbers are these three languages that you can use to describe all of your observations. And then I have my, so words, pictures, and numbers, that's one triad. The other triad is what I call, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. So I notice are my observations, I wonder are the questions. It reminds me of, what does this remind me of? This reminds me of, um, years ago, I came here with my dad. So I'm going to write, it reminds me of fishing trip. Um, fishing with my dad. All right. This, and we, we stopped, we looked out across this, this valley. We weren't catching fish right here, but, but we came to this spot. And, and that, just letting that little, that little moment be there on my page. What else does this remind me of? Um, it reminds me of um, freedom. The possibilities of going back into this space, All right, Just endless adventure there. And then I think of the stewards who were responsible for, for um, protecting this place. And the, um, and so I'm gonna put in stewardship. So just, these are a few little kind of ideas or thoughts that being in this place reminds me of. And there what you're doing is you're really letting yourself kind of come onto the page too. So this is what's going on in your mind, your heart, the connections that you're making. Let them come onto the page as well. And it becomes a really personal, a personal document of those experiences and the places that you go. The more that you adventure with a journal at your side, the more you're going to see in each place and the richer your memories will become of the wonderful places that you have visited and the places that you have worked together to save. Jack, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I am in awe of you and your talent, and I'm sure everyone else is here. Um, everyone give Jack a clap. I can't, I can't see everybody, but I know we're all uh, happy. Um, Jack, thank you so much. It was amazing. You're, I, I just can't believe how talented you are.
And well, they, so, so let, let me just say a, a thing about the whole kind of talent thing. Yeah. Because yeah. That some people are, I know there's like, r r r honestly, everybody, uh, everybody who's sitting there thinking, well, that's great if you're a professional trained artist. And, but for the rest of us, this doesn't really apply. Anybody kind of have that thought? Anybody? <laughs> like, okay, there's a few of us, right? So, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is a skill that you can all learn to a really high degree of technical competency, and it happens fast. It happens fast. You don't need some Malcolm Gladwellian 10,000 hours going on here, right? <laughs> to take you to a point where you are really, um, where you see something and it's coming out on the page, it takes roughly a year of just sort of sketching dangerously, and it will come. Your brain changes its shape. Um, if you want more coaching on this, each week, I am teaching three online free nature journaling workshops with different topics each week, right? Um, and I also am filming those and I put them up online. If you go to my website, you can find archives of all the past classes. Um, and the, the Tuesday one is it's this open forum where like if you're drawing irises and they are driving you crazy, you can't figure it out. Right, you come to the, the Tuesday class and you say, all right, here's the problem, irises, discuss, right? So you pick the topic for me and we do problem solving with whatever that is, right? And um, the Thursday classes are more of a kind of formal presentation. So that kind of training where like you can get feedback on things that are giving you difficulty, um, it's all free. And I want to invite all of you nature stewards to join me online. Um, the most important thing, though, is going out into the landscape of the Eastern Sierra <laughs> and actually drawing and journaling there. Right, I can give you a few pointers and, 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 and tricks like, like, oh, you're having trouble with that? Like, try doing this, try doing this, right? And some of these tricks will kind of make things happen faster. But the magic is just getting your own journal and going outside. You can absolutely do this. And here's my guarantee to you. If any of you decide right now, okay, I'm gonna give this a try, and you throw yourself into it for the next year, right? And at the end of the year, you say to yourself, you know what, I didn't get better, I still can't do this. Here's my, my uh, the, the agreement. And we've got, we've got other people watching, all right? I will agree to give you free personal drawing lessons right online or in person if we are close to each other <laughs> until we can figure out what's going on and we can get this problem solved because you will be a neurological anomaly that will absolutely fascinate me and i will want to find out what's going on <laughs> right um so you can absolutely do this and if you get stuck i'm here to help support you but here's the big deal you have the eastern side of the sierra nevada right i mean what I mean, the, the, the jewel in the crown of this beautiful blue planet, the most spectacular, wonderful place on earth. Now more of it saved and protected by the work that you're doing. I really want you to go out, fall in love, more deeply in love with the place that you live and celebrate that on the pages of your journal. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. For everyone, we did put links in the chat, and if you didn't catch them, uh, we can email you, but um, Jack's website is amazing, and obviously there's a lot of um, things on there. This is the quick schedule that what's coming up the rest of, I guess we've got the weekend. You can look at recordings of these things, and there's um, more events on Monday, and we will be talking at noon on Monday. For those of you who uh, haven't been with us on the other two events, I'm just going to quickly share, and uh, this is what Jack was hinting at. Um, a week ago, Eastern Sierra Land Trust did close on a conservation easement on 4,100 acres at, Brid at uh, Honeywell Ranch in Bridgeport Valley. So those 4,100 acres are now permanently protected, and it's all because of all of your help and your support. And uh, thanks for all those claps. So, um, so just know that when you're remembering today's workshop and the nature journaling, that you were a part of helping protect this amazing place. So, 
Uh, here's some other links, and I know that we're a little late. I, I don't want to keep going. I just want to thank everybody. Jack, thank you so much. I may be that anomaly, but we'll see. I will put in my work. Here's Tony and Cheryl who are sponsoring uh, this year's Lands and Legacy. I think they're still here. I can't quite see. Hi, Tony. So see you guys later. Have a great weekend, and hopefully I'll see you on Monday. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you for the work that you're doing to protect this wonderful place. Thanks. And thanks for helping us. Thanks, Jack. Go ahead, Rin. Thanks, Jack. This has been amazing and um, such a reminder of what we need right now, at least for me, just to focus on small things that are big things and then really pay attention. So I'm going to go. I'm in the Bay Area, too. So I'm in smoke. I can't get out yet. But as soon as I can, I'm going to go try some of this stuff. Um, and not be embarrassed about how it looks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, also, I want to invite any of you who would like to, uh, they've got a, a, a group, an online group we call the Nature Journal Club. Um, it's a Facebook group and people are making their sketches and sharing those online. And it's a really wonderful place um, where uh, people are coming together and sharing uh, inspiration in nature like that. So thank you all. Thank you. <laughs>